Hello, welcome back to Entrepreneur Finance. Today we're gonna start on Chapter Four. Uh, it focuses on financing a business. So we're gonna talk about different sources of capital, and、um, we are diving into the world of finance. Here are the outlines of the learning objective that we'll cover in this chapter.、Um, for each type of capital, we're gonna look at the advantages and disadvantages, especially the big categories of debt versus equity.、And、then we're gonna go into details about each type, both debt and equity, and then also、um, we'll address、um, uh, new capital financing options such as cloud funding, and lastly. And the most important is to help us at,、uh, find a systematic way to help us choose the most appropriate source of financing. Here is a typical life cycle of business. So a business will start as a business, and the capital associated with that is sometimes called startup capital or seed capital. So at this point, the entrepreneur may only have an idea,、um, or they may start doing prototyping. Next. Is when a lot of funding will be required is the launch and growth stage. At this point, they may have a minimum viable product, or they may have a fully fresh product and service. And this is when they、um, formally enter the marketplace.、Um, if they are successful, eventually they may reach a point of maturity, and Then a business can do one of two things: they can continue to expand, or they may need to revision and therefore enter a second stage of growth.、Um, and if they don't do that, sometimes they may decide to exit the marketplace, and that is、um, actually a very common strategy for entrepreneurs as well, because a lot of entrepreneurs are really good、uh, founders, but they are not necessarily、uh, good managers.、Um, If a company does not re,、um, revision itself and does not、um, look into expanding, it may eventually um, die um, or goes out of business. And here is an overview of different types of financing that business utilizes. As you can see, more than 50%, more than half of business financing comes from loans. So,、um, borrowing, particular traditional borrowing from banks, is a very large part of business financing.、Um, in addition to that,、um, finance company, we'll talk about those as well. Those are not banks, but they are usually also some kind of loan or loan hybrid type financing.、Uh, in fact,、um, venture capital and angel capital represent Represents a relatively small percentage of financing,、um, and mezzanine and buyout. This is the stage right before a company either goes public or being sell,、uh, or is being sold to another business. So when a business just starting, so this is the seed stage of a、uh, or startup stage of a business, you notice that personal saving accounts for the majority of that.、Um, some businesses don't even have startup capital, and you have definitely hear of stories of、uh, small businesses starting off on credit card. So,、um, but by and large, personal savings and friends and family are the main source for startup or seed stage capital. When a company enter, enters the growth and expansion stage,、uh, a lot of times they actually choose not to expand,、um, and that is that means that a lot of business、uh, fail to grow because they have insufficient capital, and this is contrary to what you learn in a classic economic class where there is perfect competition.、Um, in fact, in the entrepreneur world, a lot of times access to capital is restricted and limited. Here is an overview of debt versus equity. So let's take a look at the advantages. So one of the main advantage of using debt or borrowing is that you don't have to share control or profit with the bank. And oftentimes the cost of borrowing is also lower because you don't have to share future profit. Another big disadvantage is that interest on debt is tax deductible. However, they, are, they also come with disadvantages. So, for banks,、uh, if you borrow money, you're increasing risk.、Um, I want to highlight that's increasing the financial risk.、Um, and if you are unable to pay off interest,、um, you will、um, or repayment of the original、uh, principal, you may end up having to declare bankruptcy. So, a company that has that is highly leveraged or have, or have a lot of debt on hand increases the stress for the entrepreneur. 
so th that which means that some of those may be the benefits of using equity. So first of all, um, you may have um, easier time finding an investor. So the amount of money available to you may be bigger. And in addition to giving you money, uh, and outside investors can also provide experience and they can serve as your mentor. Um, and the, contrary to debt, uh, equity is not a legal obligation and therefore it does not increase the financial risk. In fact, if you are able to pay off some debt by bringing in an outside investors, you can reduce your financial leverage and F, therefore um, increase the borrowing capacity um, of the firm. Uh, the downside of bringing an outside equity investor is that you have to share your control um, and that can be a main uh, consideration for an uh, entrepreneur. Uh, in addition, uh, is you have to share future profit and cost of equity is typically higher than cost of debt. And then finally, if you use the corporate forms uh, uh, or the C Corp, um, then the dividends um, that you pay to investors are not tax deductible. Now, of course, you can um, stay as an LLC and that way the tax disadvantage is not as significant for using equity. Now, let's take a deep uh, look uh, in more details about um, debt financing. So there are different types of loans. Um, one type of loan are called asset-backed loans. Um, so this includes um, equipment loan, um, real estate loan. Most of these loans are amortized. Amortized means that um, each payment will include both principal and interest, and oftentimes the amount is fixed um, if you have a fixed rate mortgage. And uh, by the time you pay off, um, when, when you finish paying off the loan, you have paid off both the principal and the interest. Um, another very common loans are called unsecured term loans. You, uh, most of the um, lender of this type of loans are uh, commercial banks. And the unsecured means that they're not backed by any specific asset. These loans are also amortized. Uh, a very common form that used by a lot of business, particular business that are seasonal in nature, is lines of credit. Lines of credit is a promise by a bank to advance credit to the company, but the company doesn't have to pay interest until they actually take out um, loans. Lastly, this concept called factoring. It is not actually a loan, and we'll describe that, and we'll talk about that a, little bit, a lot more. Something similar to factoring is merchant cash advance. Merchant cash advance is similar um, in organization to uh, a payday loan. So a, a, an MCA is like a payday loan for a business. So as I mentioned, as you saw on the, on the uh, graph earlier, uh, banks is the number one provider of loans to most businesses. And a lot of banks also work with the SBA. If you're able to get an SBA guarantee, what you will end up uh, being able to do is to borrow at a lower rate than you could without an SBA guarantee. So it is um, a valuable resource for business to try to get an SBA guarantee. Um, non-bank non non -bank financial companies, these companies typically work with factoring and uh, merchant cash advance. Uh, merchant cash advance companies, we'll talk a lot more about them. They are, they are a, a separate category all on its own. Lastly, this is a new entrance to the uh, corporate financing, uh, and this is peer-to-peer -peer lending. So these are um, based on uh, not formal banks, but these are other investors who are interested in lending money to small businesses. Here's an overview on uh, sm uh, small business bank loans. As you can see, um, the majority of loans are less than $100,000. 92% of the loan in terms of um, number of loans it, uh, have an amount of less than $100,000. Uh, however, in terms of value, 79% um, of the loan value um, is between $100,000 and $1 million. And you'll notice that a lot of that is in commercial and real estate loans. So if you want to borrow money as a startup firm, here are the documents that um, a bank would typically ask. 
So the, because this is a startup firm, that means there is no history for the, for the business. And the bank will want your own personal guarantee. So they will want a personal statement of the founder, um, the income tax return for the founders. They really want to know how you plan to use the money. So you want they want a detailed estimates of the startup cost. So if you borrow, say, $50,000, they want to know how those $50,000 will be used. Um, you need to create a performer balance sheet income statements. These are things that we'll do later on in this book. Um, and also cash flow projection. So those are all tools that you will learn in later chapters. If you have available, and a lot of times um, banks may ask that for the owner to put up collateral. So this can be asset um, or they can be investment. They can be security. It can be 401k. Um, they oftentimes will require that from the owner. Also a business plan. Again, we're going to talk about that in a later chapter. And this is very important, uh, a, an analysis that show the bank that you will be able to pay off the loan and interest payment. So they want to know how you will be able to do that. Um, one of them would be, a, one way to demonstrate that would be through a break-even analysis. Now for an existing business, you, they will need a different set of documents because an existing business has its own history. They're going to look at the financial statements. So that will be the income statement and the balance sheets for the business. Um, they also want projected. So these are the performer balance sheet income statements again and cash flow statements. So those are very similar. But instead of focusing on the owner's financial status, they're going to focus on the business financial status. And they also want to look at tax return and they want both the business and the personal tax return because again, for a small business and family owned business, a lot of times the, um, the tax return or they, they design the tax structure to minimize tax for the owners. So by looking at both the personal and the business tax, they will have uh, the bank will have a better idea on the cash flows of the firm. Similar to a startup business, the bank really want to know what you plan to do with the money. So you want to be very clear about what the plans will be. And if the loan that you're taking out is intended to be secured by an asset, whether it is an equipment or a uh, or real estate, obviously they that will make the loan the 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 interest lower and more likely for the bank to loan you the money. Next, let's take a look at another form of financing. Um, it's called factoring. Factoring is a way to convert your accounts receivables into cash quickly. Technically, it's not considered a loan because it, and it is not regulated um, because the way that it is interpreted is that you're actually selling the accounts receivables to this company. Uh, but there are different types of factoring. There are recourse, or non-recourse. In a factoring contract that has recourse, if your customers do not pay up, then the financing company can come back to you to seek payment. In a non-recourse factoring contract, you sell the accounts receivables to a financing company, and if your customers don't pay up, then the losses um, will be attributed to the financing company and you don't have to pay them back. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say your company have monthly sales about $80,000 and the factor rate is 3.5%. To determine how much it actually is costing you, it, it does need to take into account how, how often you collect from your customers. So let's say your average collection period is 30 days. The cash advance rate is 95%, which means that the company will not give you the entire um, uh, $80,000, but instead you, you advance or give you 95% of the $80,000. But the rate that they charge, the 3.5%, is charged on the $80,000. So the factor fee is the factor rate, which is 3.5% times $80,000. So it costs you $2,800. The amount that you receive is the 
So they're going to hold back 5%. And so 95% times $80,000. Plus, they're going to subtract out their fee to $2,800. So you're going to walk away with $73,200. Um, you are selling them $80,000 worth of accounts of receivable, but you receive a cash amount of $73,200. Now, if your customers pay in full, then you'll get that last 5%. So when we talk about the withholding 5%, so 5% on $80,000 is $4,000. So if your customers pay up 100%, then you will get um, the additional $4,000. So if you add that, even if you ignore the time value of money for the one month, you add that to the $73,200, the total amount that you get is $77,200. So the $77,200 is the $73,200 that you receive up front, plus the $4,000 that you get, assuming your customer pay in full. You pay a fee of $2,800 to borrow this amount. So the interest rate over the 30-day period is $2,800 uh, over the $77,200. $70,200 you receive and is 3.63% every 30 days. So this is 3.63% per month. On a per year basis, that amounts to 44%. And that is why factoring is considered a very expensive form of um, financing. Another form of financing is called merchant cash advance. This is also technically not a loan. Um, and the way that a merchant cash advance work is that you don't really pay, um, you get the cash, but the amount, the way that they collect their um, money back um, is not contingent upon you paying them. Most of the time they require that the, they have direct access to the business uh, revenue. So the most common arrangement is through a credit card processing uh, arrangement. So uh, the way that it works is if you go, if you obtain cash with a merchant cash advance um, financier or company, you'll be required to change your credit card processing service provider to one that the merchant cash advance company uses. And after you switch over, then you will, your credit card revenue will be split between you and the merchant cash advance company. Let's walk through an example. This is a, a real life example. Yucatan Taco um, is a small business. So they pay a fee of $20,000. They get $80,000 in advance. So right there, you know that this is relatively, this is very expensive. So they figure out what your um, average daily sales is, and then they determine the merchant cash advance companies determine how much of the daily sales they will take as a repayment to the loan. So they look at the payment history of Yucatan Taco and decided that they will take away 12% of the daily sales. So let's say the average daily sales for Yucatan Taco is $5,700. So what that means is every day, the merchant cash advance companies will take 12%. So they'll take a cut of $686 right off the top every day. So you can then tackle will have, you know, what is remaining going to them. So they never see the $686. This is redirected from the, from their credit card sales to the per merchant cash advance company. So let's take a look. They borrow $80,000 and the fee is $20,000. So they have to repay a total of $100,000. And they're repaying $686 a day. So if you divide $100,000 by $686 per day, it takes them about 146 days to repay. So the interest rate over the hundred over this time period, so it's $20,000 divided by $80,000, so that's 25%. So it's 25% every 146 days. That turns out to be 68% per year.
So again, merchant cash advance is, is an expensive form of financing. And more importantly, because the cash is taken out directly from its revenue. Um, if a company does not, um, may not have enough money to maintain its operation. And a lot of times businesses end up trapped into a merchant cash advanced problem because in order to make the payment of $686 every day, there's a high probability that the company may be uh, rank, uh, racking up um, credit cards or maybe in arrears, meaning they are behind on their payment to their suppliers or their employee. And when the 160 days come up or even before it come up, they'll have to go back to the um, merchant cash advance companies and take out advance again. And then the whole cycle continues. So using debt financing can be risky. Another form of financing is using equity. And equity may be less risk in one sense, meaning that you don't have to pay interest and you are not likely to go bankrupt, but it also comes with its costs. Equity financing for an entrepreneur typically means bringing on a new partner, seeking external equity from somebody else. This is a huge decision because you are now sharing your business. Um, there are many different external equity sources. The most common um, sources include angel investors, and they typically invest in early stages of a business. A lot of times angel investors may be willing to be minority owners, meaning that they may, they may be willing to take 5%, 10% of a business. Um, what that means is, this is important because being a minority owner means that the entrepreneurs will, maintain, will remain majority owners and therefore maintain a significant amount of control over the firm. Of course, the angel investor being part of the owners will now have a say, but the entrepreneurs will still be the majority owners. And angel investors provide not just money, oftentimes they also provide expertise and ment mem uh, mentorship. So angel investors typically are uh, successful investors or successful entrepreneurs who know the industry well and have um, helped other entre entrepreneurs become successful. The next stage is, from angel investor is typically a venture capital firm. A venture capital firm typically only invest interested in larger investments. So they will come in at a later stage of the life cycle. They usually come in at the growth and expensive expansion stage. And they typically will demand majority ownership. They want to take over uh, control of the firm. So this is a huge decision to go uh, from angel investor to venture capital. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. The goal of a venture capital firm is not long-term investment, but rather they want to either take the company public or they want to sell the company to another firm. So a venture capital is typically an intermediate stage to take the company to the next level. And then there are uh, companies called SBIC. These are small business investment companies. And then lastly, um, we will talk about crowdfunding. When we talk about equity financing, we do need to take uh, talk um, a little bit about government regulations. Again, I want to refer you to the textbook, which contains a lot more information. The most important regulation uh, that governs this is the Security and Exchange Commission. So this is the called the SEC. Um, for entrepreneur, what you uh, what you want to be aware is that if your uh, offering does not satisfy the exemption that is provided by the SEC, your company will have to uh, follow the disclosure and rec reporting requirement. And those can be uh, substantial and expensive. And typically public company, meaning companies whose stocks are traded on public stock exchanges, will have to follow those rules. So how do you circulate or get, uh, uh, be exempt from those rules? First of all, if all your investors are accredited investors. So again, the textbook defines what those are. The SEC rule defines who an accredited investor is. Um, and then uh, rule 506 of regulation D talks about that. And as long as those rules are satisfied, then you are exempt from the filing and reporting requirements.
Another rule that you want to get to know is rule 506C. So again, I'm highlighting the information that you need to know. And instead of reading the, the book to you, uh, these are the chapters that you need to pay attention to. So meeting, meeting these three requirements will exempt the company from registering their securities and from filing the report. When choosing a angel investor or a venture capital firm, it's, in order, it's important for you to make sure that the investment criteria of the angel investors or the venture capital firm matches your company. Um, a good match is extremely important. Otherwise, you either be you'll get turned down or you end up with a um, a relationship that is not successful. So um, when you go to an angel investor, um, you will typically see the following information. They oftentimes are very specific and clear about the amount of funding they're looking for. So some angel investors may may be only interested in investing uh, in less than say $500,000. Or some may say they're only interested in investing um, between five hundred thousand to a million dollars. Um, venture capital funds oftentimes are not interested in investing in firms with amounts less than, say, two or three million dollars. So again, finding the right match. Uh, the more money you get, the more control you will probably end up having to give up. Um, another criteria is the stage of your firm's life cycle. So angel investors may be willing to invest in a very early uh, stage, meaning that you may just have a proof of concept or you may just have a patent. Um, on the other hand, a venture capital firm may want to show revenue and customer um, base before they are interested in, invest in investing. Um, most of them, not all, may have a job graphic preference or restriction, um, but more likely they'll have an industry preference. So you want to have a good match. Uh, unlike, um, uh, it's not true that only high tech firm can get angel investors or venture capital firm. Some angel investors and some venture capital firms specifically want to invest in areas that they have expertise in so and that and those areas may be manufacturing may be customer service oriented um some of them of course a lot of them are um technology related uh again some company some investors um may want to look at may want to look look at firms that have revenue history or cash flow history uh other other um angel investors may be willing to invest in a firm before they have a solid revenue stream one of the things that is most important that both angel investor and venture capital firm look for are experiences of the management team they want a well-rounded management team uh you know, the small business investment company, SBIC, uh, even though there is a very um, unique type of um, entity, they are partnered with the SBA, Small Business Administration, which is a government agency. However, SBICs are not government agencies. They are for-profit investment funds, even though they partner with the SBA. So it's very important to remember that they are private for-profit investment funds. Um, their investment criteria is not regulated by the government at, at all, except because they have the word small business as their mission. They do have to, they are regulated by size. So small business is defined by the government. So based on the last two years, um, either it will be net worth. So currently that will be a net worth of less than $18 million or net income, which is uh, you have to have a net income of less than $6 million. The SBIC, each SBIC can include additional criteria. And these criteria are very similar to those that you may find in angel investing or a, a venture capital firm. They may include the amount of investment that they're interested in for in providing, uh, their policy, so whether or not they are interested in only investing as equity or loan or some kind of hybrid or convertibles. Um, similar to angel investor and venture capital firm, they may specify the life cycle of the business, meaning whether or not they have revenue, uh, early stage or, or uh, growth stage. They may have industry preferences or geographic uh, preferences. 
here's a final overview of venture capital. And as you see, the majority of the deal, 50%, is in early stage. So these are the uh, angel investors. So a lot of them, in terms of number of deals, are in early stage. Um, but in terms of dollar amount, most of the dollar amount is in expansion and late stage. So they may put a smaller amount of money in early stage and also in expansion, but the majority of the money is in expansion and late stage. Uh, very, very, very unlikely to be at the seed or startup stage. So 3% of the dollar amount and 5% in terms of number of deals. This concludes the overview for chapter four and I'll see you again soon.